Coming up on today's podcast, a bit of this. I don't know if she'd get, yeah, she'd get through customs with that. Yeah, there's no hair covering her face, she's looking direct at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> and a bit of this. Sounds like, sounds like a product and I don't know what it's for though. <laughs> it was for removing um, eyebrows off of old paintings. <laughs> Are we on? We're on. Hello and welcome to episode number 16 of Modern Art is Rubbish. Is it episode number 16? I'll take your word for yeah, it, Marcus. Yeah, let's say episode 16. If it's not, I'll edit it out. Um, you all right, Tom? Yeah, no, I'm yeah. really good, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you, you're looking all... Uh, for people who can't see, I, all of you, uh, he's looking very animated. You're very animated, Tom. Are you excited? Or something well i'm uh i don't know i am part human part cartoon character it has to be said <laughs> yeah. i think it must be today's subject the mona lisa oh now yeah. mona lisa is not a painter no no we're talking just about the painting just one painting my first uh memory of anything to do with art was actually the mona lisa Basically, the Mona Lisa used to hang in my nan's flat in Basildon in Essex. Basildon actually is uh, most famous for, I think, it's the hometown of uh, the band Depeche Mode. Okay, so if, if the Mona Lisa hung in your nan's flat in Basildon, flat. or council house, sorry, in Basildon. So I presume this is similar to the Mona Lisa you might find on eBay. Yeah, well, it was obviously before eBay, and uh, I always I remember. Uh, when I used to stay there, when she used to look after me, I used to uh, go to sleep uh, looking at the wall. She was a bit like a mother, a mother-like figure looking at me. And she was beautifully striped uh, by a sort of like an orange light from the street lamp outside. So this is Mona Lisa, not your grandma? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Mona Lisa was there and she had this beautiful light from the street lamp, a sort of like a golden glow. So mm. that's why I'm... Uh, that's how I remember the Mona Lisa. Yeah, I had my granddad lived there as well. I felt a bit bad that I didn't mention him as well. Uh, so did uh, did she have other paintings in her council flat? Yeah, she had one of the uh, uh, of a tea clipper. I think it was the I think it was the Blue Peter. That was really it. Yeah, she didn't have many much other art, but apart from the Mona Lisa and a uh, and a knitted uh, lady who who she used that sat in the bathroom so it was like an old uh, dolly I don't know if you've ever seen it's a lot of dollies and they have big knitted skirts and you can hide the toilet roll underneath them oh nice you know what I mean because you know when you walk into like a like a bathroom and you see ugly toilet rolls but in my nan you'd walk into the bathroom and you'd see a doll with a beautiful big flowing knitted skirt which hid the toilet roll it sounds like a very classy bathroom. Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> so, about the Mona Lisa, you know, everyone knows it. It's, I, it is the most famous painting in the world. It's so famous, it actually even receives uh, fan mail and love poetry. It just gets sent to it at the Louvre. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Some people say have got a lot of time on their hands, haven't yeah. they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, your your paint looks really nice. <laughs> the thing is, there's been like songs written about the Mona Lisa, and uh, you know you can get t-shirts, books, and uh, I I saw there's even Mona Lisa condoms. Wow, Mona Lisa condoms! I did not know that sort of product was available. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, I hope Leonardo da Vinci's um, getting his uh, his what? <laughs> <laughs> his his share of them. <laughs> his share, yeah. <laughs> his percentage. <laughs> well, I guess when the Mona Lisa was painted, I don't know what exactly what era it was. They wouldn't have had condoms back then. Uh, yeah, what what era are we talking about? When was it painted, Mona Lisa? Well, the Mona Lisa was actually painted uh, around 1503 and it was uh, finished 
about 1506, but apparently he kept painting it till 1517. So it's quite a long time, really. It's, it's done well. Five over 500 years, the paint still looks good. Yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I actually asked a friend of uh, ours, uh, Paul. He actually has seen it, and I asked him what it felt like when he saw it. So here's a uh, a little clip. Yeah, I mean, I remember being strangely drawn towards it, and I don't know if it was because. It was the Mona Lisa, but her eyes do follow you around. And I know, like, we've all seen pictures of her everywhere. The actual real one just felt like there was something a bit spooky about it. There's something very enchanting. The colours are really vibrant. Yeah, it did. It affected me. It's like the only painting I've ever seen that's really affected me that way. But I can't describe. It's the eyes, isn't it? It's the eyes. It's the eyes, because they actually do look at you. And that was quite revolutionary at the time thing how he um describes it so much as a person the Mona yeah. Lisa it's like her even though it's actually a canvas with yeah. paint on it yeah yeah it's like a real life person how people talk about it I guess I've heard other people talking about the Mona Lisa like a real person yeah uh, it's I mean that's probably why they she, she receives all the fan mail the fact that we call a she and not a the painting the painting uh, yeah. yeah I mean <laughs> the thing is, is as well is he did he did mention something uh, which uh, an art critic called uh, John Berger talked about years ago in his uh, uh, in a book called Ways of Seeing, and it was the idea that when people went to see paintings years ago, there was none of this kind of media about them, so it was just you in this painting. But now, when you go and see the Mona Lisa, you're seeing it. All that history of having seen it on TV, having seen it on condoms, having seen it on T-shirts. So you're not just seeing the painting, you're bringing all that kind of baggage with you. Absolutely, yeah. And I mean, if you first saw it on a condom, that's going to change how you view it, surely. (laughs) (laughs) So, I mean, again, we talked about it. it is a revolutionary painting because... Before Da Vinci painted it, portraits were just like side on in profile and very staid and very kind of formal. Suddenly, Da Vinci comes along and he paints this thing of this woman who's like kind of like very casual and very sort of. What like, is it kind of really cool? Is she a bit cool or something? Well, yeah. What I mean, we'd call nowadays cool. Yeah, I think she, she was pretty, uh, pretty cool, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you look at the painting, you know, you've got this fantasy background and uh, something else, which I'll, in case I forget to mention, was in the actual painting, she doesn't look like she's got any eyebrows or eyelashes. And there's a theory that at the time, again, women weren't using mascara or eyeliner as much, or th- it just wasn't being used at all. So he would have painted some eyebrows or eyelashes, but they wouldn't have been done so thickly. It's possible that during restoration, these very delicate eyelashes actually were taken off over the years. Restored away. Yeah, restored away. Yeah. Restore away. That sounds like <laughs> sounds like a product, and I don't know what it's for, though. <laughs> <laughs> it was for removing um, eyebrows off of old paintings. <laughs> <laughs> the, the other thing is to mention is it's quite a surprisingly uh, small picture yes i i saw the painting i told yeah. you didn't i i saw the painting when i was a you know a young a youngster so many years ago and uh, i can remember it being small and being surprised because i'd seen it before i mean in real life it's just a little painting yeah i mean if anyone's interested the dimensions are it's uh, 77 centimeters by 53 centimeters which is 30 inches by 21 inches the other thing to mention is mona she uh, Mona actually just means that it's kind of like an Italian equivalent of saying "mom" or "madam" or "my lady," "my lady Lisa." Oh, okay, English. yeah. So Mona wasn't actually her name; it's just uh, Mrs. Lisa or Miss yeah. Lisa. My lady Lisa. <laughs> My lady Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I, yes. Yeah. See, so, so look, we're talking about. It. Look at this. Look at the the picture of My Lady Lisa. <laughs> yeah, she is. I mean, who was she? The actual person that the painting is supposed to be of is a person called Lisa Gerardini. And she actually came from quite humble beginnings. And she was born uh, the 15th of June, 1479 in Florence. And she died the 15th of July, 1542. 
Now, Da Vinci didn't like to paint many portraits for people. He didn't do many paintings. You know, if you asked him, would you do this work for me? He'd generally probably turn you down. Yeah, in, in Italian. Yeah. Because he, he was Italian, wasn't he? Yes. So why would he paint just, you know, someone that's not, not famous, not noble? And uh, apparently... Uh, her family lived extremely close to Leonardo's father. So, I mean, literally almost neighbours. Also, she married uh, a guy called Francesco de Giocondo. Now, he was a merchant who also was a client of Leonardo da Vinci's father. So it's, it's all about who you know. Uh, so Lisa uh, married him and became Lisa del Giocondo. I think he was a bit of a strong persuader. So I think that's why he was probably able to persuade uh, Leonardo to say, you know, will you, you know, fancy doing his painting for me? It's probably made him an offer he couldn't refuse. So Francesco del Giocondo, did he pay Leonardo to do this? Well, this is the this thing. This portrait. This is the thing about the the mysteries that surround uh, the Mona Lisa. She still has a lot of secrets that she's keeping, and one is that there is no evidence that a painting was ever given to him. Now, this painting, this painting that hangs in the Louvre, um, was actually still in the possession of Leonardo up to the point of his death. What is the uh, journey from Leonardo's death that the painting took to get to the Louvre? Well, the thing is, is uh, he left it to one of his assistants. Leonardo was actually invited over by the uh, King of France, um, Francis I. Uh, to, I don't know, come over and do his Leonardo stuff. So Leonardo still had the, the painting in possession when he moved there. And when he died, he left, Leonardo left it to his assistant and his assistant sold it on to the French king. And it was held at the palace of Fontainebleau. And it remained in the palace of Fontainebleau until King Louis XIV moved the painting to the palace of Versailles. And then following the French Revolution, it was moved to the Louvre. But how do, how do they know that there was a painting by Leonardo of this person? Giorgio Vasari. Now, Giorgio Vasari is considered to be the first important art historian and he described actually seeing the unfinished painting in his book the lives of the most excellent painters sculptors and architects published in 1568 the second edition and this is what he wrote leonardo undertook to execute for francesco de gil condo the portrait of mona lisa and after he lingered over it for four years he left it unfinished and the work is today in the possession of the King Francis of France at Fontainebleau. So that's someone first-hand seeing it. Wow, yeah. Interestingly enough, we, the, the, we talked about the eyebrows as well, and he described the portrait as having eyelashes and eyebrows. And he also noted a reason for the smile, which, which I found quite interesting, because, of course, she's known for that kind of like... This, actually the state I spend most of my life in that kind of like semi kind of wry smile I suppose would you describe her smile like that I guess so oh, yeah I guess is she smiling it's she's kind a of a cheeky. smile cheeky yeah she's cheeky that's what I think it's not like a really obvious smile but it doesn't it looks fairly smiley well apparently a Mona Lisa being very beautiful while he was painting her portrait he retained those who played or sang and continually jested who would make her to remain merry in order to take away that melancholy which painters are often wont to give to their portraits. Yeah, so he was keeping the talent happy. Yeah. I think today you might have played a episode of Modern Art is Rubbish in the background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she is. She's listening to, uh, I think, probably our, our little uh, Banksy skit. I think she... She'd be quite amused by that. The one we yeah, did. Well, she pre- wouldn't know who Banksy was, and I'm not. I'm not sure she'd speak English. She'd want some uh, Italian language in our podcast. Oh, well, maybe to she- make her laugh. <laughs> <laughs> podcast. <laughs> so, what we see today is this kind of like 
fantastical painting of what looks like a quite an idealized almost sort of spiritual image now there is talk that there was another mona lisa painted before and when you say another mona lisa another painting of of yes. lisa yes another painting uh, unfinished now in 1504, Raphael, the artist, went to Leonardo's studio and saw the painting and actually did a sketch slightly different from the one that hangs in the Louvre. Uh, the background looks a lot more naturalistic. You know, there's just a tree and, uh, and a small building and also very significant, there's two columns either side of the Mona Lisa. What's the significance of the columns? There are no columns on the finished painting. Sure, yeah. So either there's another painting or they were scrubbed out by Leonardo what's, just... the, what's the stuff they used to get rid of eyebrows <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't remember what it was yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's something skin. away isn't it yeah yeah um... <laughs> there is actually in existence another painting and it's called this is a rather glamorous the Isleworth Mona Lisa. Just before World War One, the English collector, Hugh Blaker, spotted it in a manor house in Somerset and it'd been there for a hundred years. So he bought it back to his studio in Isleworth, London, and this is why it's actually called the Isleworth Mona Lisa. Um, it's now in a private collection and is rarely seen. And what it is is a painting of a, a, what looks like a younger Mona Lisa. It's an unfinished painting. Uh, Vasari actually mentioned that the painting was unfinished um, and it has columns in it which is similar to the sketch that Raphael did um, yeah the columns are they just like a, a window frame or something no no they are actually columns they're, 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 they're columns placed through I don't know whether she's sitting on the terrace or the terrace <laughs> the terrace <laughs> no we're no for posh there <laughs> terrace actually <laughs> I don't know why why did I suddenly slip into posh Marcus yeah, no, yeah. The, te the terrace is an interesting oh, no, concept everyone of might, poshness. No one will think I'm from Essex now. They'll think I'm suddenly like... Um, <laughs> the terrace. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. So that's, again, as I say, it's similar to the Raphael. They did test, they took tiny samples from the background of the, of the painting and it showed that they were, they were similar to the paints used at the same time. So that's strong evidence that there's a similar paint uh, pigment being used. And also, interestingly, there's a quite a modern test which was done by a, a Professor John F. Asmus. And what he does is he compares the light and shade of a painting to another painting because it, it's almost like a signature. When you paint, his theory is, is that, that each artist has a, a style. And what he actually did was he was able to tell by measuring the light and shade in each picture, whether a Rembrandt was a fake or not. Okay, so this other picture of the Mona Lisa is is by a different artist. Well, no, this is the thing: is he did the study, and according to the study of light and shade, it's handled in exactly the same way that the, the Leonardo da Vinci handles light and shade. It could have been an imitation, possibly or not. There are people that say it may not be by Da Vinci. There's still discussion on whether it is, but there's a lot of okay, people that believe yeah. it is. Now, I'm looking at it. My gut says part of it is. I, I don't know if all of it is, because that does happen where an artist does some of the canvas and then someone else comes along and does the rest of it. Right, yeah. There's another issue. It was painted on canvas. Leonardo mostly painted on board, so most of his works were oil on board. But you think uh, like an artist like Leonardo, so successful yeah. of his time, he would have uh, tried different things. Yes, I mean, he has he, used he, canvas. But, he, but he, not, he probably not. spent like half his life painting, like a third of it sleeping, yeah. half of it painting, and a little <laughs> bit for eating. And, and other ones designing <laughs> weapons for, yeah, designing for patrons. Weapons. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you imagine he must have painted on canvas. If people were doing that at the time... Yeah. Why, why would a, a professional painter not be using that at some point? Yeah, definitely. So, again, this is the theory that this, the Isleworth Mona Lisa, may be the original. 
And what that means is that the one that hangs in the Louvre is a second version. Leonardo used to return to his subjects again and again. So this is almost like a second idealised version of, of, of the character of Mona Lisa. And the reason I, I say that is because I've mentioned the fantastical background. And also, if you look there on the shoulder, and again, these pictures, we will have these on the website. If you have a look on the shoulder of the Mona Lisa, there's a sash there. That is not of the, the dress of the time. That is something that was given to sort of like gods and uh, things from myth and lection, legend in, in Greco-Roman times. So Roman and Greek art would have sashes. So that again is not something that a normal, a normal human, normal human, a person would be wearing at the time. Yeah, so she's been dressed up in this picture to yeah. to, uh, to look like a, a goddess. And again, that lovely sort of flowing, uh, which is actually well conditioned, I think, her flowing well conditioned locks that are hanging on her shoulders. You wouldn't have had your hair like that if you'd just been a normal kind of uh, a merchant's wife. There's no way you would have had your hair hanging down like that. Maybe in France where they had the laboratoire. <laughs> uh, other shampoos and uh, uh, salons are available <laughs> laboratory because <laughs> I'm worth it no that's a that's a different one completely because the Mona Lisa is worth it that's why he painted it <laughs> yeah, she, does, she does have wonderful looking hair I'm a bit jealous <laughs> um, so that's the theory behind the Islesworth Mona Lisa but so we we can pretty much say that da vinci did paint a picture of lisa del geo condo we well, we know that from the uh the doc document oh, yes. well the uh the art history books yes. from yes. 1568 yeah and also there was another guy augustino Vespu Ves vespucci who was a clerk uh um an assistant to Niccolo Machiavelli, Machiavelli, which is quite interesting as well, because he was also friends with Da Vinci, and he also saw the painting and spoke of it. So there's there's strong evidence to say that 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 Lisa was painted by them. But I mean, is there? Does anyone doubt it? Why is there a story that doubts Leonardo da Vinci painted it? Why is there? Well, no, the, the a debate over it. The question is: is are there two versions? where is this painting of Lisa del Giacondo recently there's been a, a French scientist called Pascal Coty who using multispectral scanning techniques I think that's where they measure different frequencies of light looked at the Mona Lisa the actual one that hangs in the Louvre scanned it and saw that there's a, another version below a mystery third version. Yeah, a mystery painting underneath, and it's not. You know, like when artists sometimes they'll 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 try and rework out, they'll reposition a hand, or they'll reposition a head, or or something. Well, like I that. can imagine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Genuinely, you can see there's a kind of consistency, but this is of a completely different person. You can see that she's got her hair swept back. She's looking slightly different in the in the the picture. The she painting. she hasn't got the goddess sash, has she? No, she's got. She doesn't look to have the sash on. So there is a theory that there wasn't two paintings, and that this one is the actual Mona Lisa. So what he did was he started to paint this work. Said, "No, you're not going to have my painting," and uh, just painted over it. And that's why we have the Mona Lisa today. Yeah, so uh, do, you, it, do you think he painted the underneath one? It seems to me he did the underneath one and then he like edited it afterwards after maybe uh, Lisa had left. Yeah. Like, you know, he didn't have the model anymore. He could have uh, just... The, un, what I'm saying is the underneath one might be actually what he was painting. Again, I think that's true. I think there could have been a situation whereby he thought, oh, actually, I don't like the way that... Uh, Francesco Del Giacondo pressured me into doing it, you know. 
I didn't like his strong persuasion techniques. In fact, I'm not going to give him this painting. I don't like being told what to do. And I'm going to paint over my, in my own idealised version of this incredible woman. And that's why Paul was overwhelmed by the power, as you heard in his speech, because uh, when he was being talking about it, because it's Leonardo creating this super powerful being. And that's why he didn't get rid of her. Maybe... Maybe. What about the I? I um I asked a uh, a friend of mine, in first she knew of the Mona Lisa, and she yeah. was like, "Yeah, the eyes follow you around the room." Yes. Yes. So is is that a thing or? Yes, that is true, and that's also very rare. It's a very revolutionary painting for someone to paint something where the eyes actually look at you, where the where it's a female sitter and they're looking at you, they're looking out from the painting at at the viewer. That's very, very sort of groundbreaking for the time. So it was like an early version of the passport photograph. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if she'd get... Yeah, she'd get through customs with that. Yeah, there's no hair covering her face. She's looking direct at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Do you say you're from Italy, madam? <laughs> Where are you travelling today? <laughs> to, to, to France. <laughs> to Paris. <laughs> Why is the Mona Lisa so famous? That would be quite a nice... Uh, okay, so so why is the Mona Lisa so famous, Marcus? <laughs> <laughs> why? Tell me. <laughs> the, the thing is, the thing is, it was just a well-known painting. It was another painting in the Louvre. But in 1911, it was stolen. And that's what actually propelled it to uh, international fame. Really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so wow that's uh so he got so someone actually pinched it from the louvre or from the royal the palace of versailles no it was in the louvre at the time so vincenzo perugia he was an italian who had worked at the louvre um stole it so he, he wasn't working at the time he was a previous member yeah of yeah, staff, yeah yeah and he went back and took it on the 21st of august 1911 he stole it and actually it wasn't noticed uh, till the the, uh, the next day that it was actually missing. So what happened was he went in on Sunday, he was looking at the paintings, thought, oh, that, you know. Apparently he hid in a closet. They always hide in a closet, don't they? So apparently... What, art thieves? Yeah, he hid in a closet <laughs> overnight. And then the Monday, which was a maintenance day, so the Louvre was closed, he, he was dressed in workman's overalls and he put the painting underneath his uh, overalls and proceeded to uh, make his escape down the maintenance stairs. Now, we know he went down the maintenance stairs because he took the painting out of the frame. And then what happened was... He, well, he left the frame on the maintenance stairs. Yeah, on the stairs. Yeah. And then he was trying to get out uh, get out of the place and he noticed the door was locked. So I think he did quite a good act because a plumber came along and said, he said, oh, look, I need to get out, I need to get out, this is ridiculous. And the plumber said, oh, well, I'll let you out. So uh, he made his escape. At the time, it became massive news because people were thinking, you know, who's stolen it? You know, and there was, there was huge rewards uh, offered. There was loads of theories going around. They even got clairvoyants to try and see if they could find out the location mediums. They even thought that it might be a German conspiracy to embarrass the French government. They thought that it was a millionaire who might have just said, oh, you know, like, I'll, I'll get it to order. And even Picasso was implicated by his friend in the theft and he was actually questioned. Wow. Yeah, so it was a, it was a big... It a was a big, big scandal. hoo-ha. Yeah, a big hoo-ha. Yeah. Now, where had it been? It'd actually been in, in uh, Vincenzo... Hang on, where, so where had it been? In <laughs> 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 Vincenzo Perugia had, uh, had it in his flat under his bed for a couple of years in France. Now, a couple of years, yeah, wow. Yeah. He actually got caught. Now, just to explain, he considered himself a patriot. He mistakenly, he thought that all the paintings in the Louvre that were Italian, most of them were stolen by Napoleon. So he felt it was all nicked to art. He wanted to return it to his yeah, homeland. It was his duty. Now, it's not the case. Napoleon didn't steal that work, as we've explained. So he writes to this guy in Florence called Alfredo Jerry, asked him, you know, look, I've got this painting. 
and to, can you give me a reward for it? Because, you know, he's doing the patriotic thing. Yeah. I'm going to write for a reward. So the guy thinks, well, oh, this is ridiculous. So uh, Jerry says, well, come over. Come over to Italy. So he comes over to Italy with the painting and he hands it to, to the guy, Jerry. And Jerry says, can you leave it here with me? Um, you know, I'll, I want to check its authenticity because he didn't have a certificate of authenticity. Sure, so. yeah. Um, so, of course, what are you going to do? Jerry contacted the uh, authorities. And so he knew the painting and knew it had been stolen. Yes. Because obviously he'd heard the hoo-ha yeah, yeah. from in yeah. Italy. Well, where yeah. was he in Florence? Yeah, he was in Florence, yeah. So he'd heard the hoo-ha coming from Paris in Florence. Yeah. And so when he saw it, he knew. Yeah. And he was like, oh, well, I'm reporting him. Yeah, yeah. So the police arrested Perugia that day and um, he ended up going to court. Now, they actually asked him why did he choose the Mona Lisa? Because you can imagine this is now massively famous. And everyone's thinking, you know, it's gone round the world. The Mona Lisa's gone missing. The great hunt for it. And this is why this painting suddenly became so famous. That sounds like Kenzie the cat bashing. Yeah. She's trying to get the artwork inside. Oh, the, my uh, God. Is it, is it the Brighton Mona Lisa? Or Mona Kenzie. Mona Kenzie. Yeah. <laughs> so the reason why he chose it was not because it was this great, amazing painting. It was because he, he looks at other ones. He looks at, like, Correggio. He looks at Raphael. And he thought, you know, I'll take the Mona Lisa because it's small. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's easily... It's easily detached because it was just hang on, hung on hooks on the wall. So he just popped it off the wall. It's definitely Italian. Yeah. So he got six months in uh, uh, in prison because he'd always done a little bit of time being inside. And I think the judge was lenient. I think he was a little bit dim. Yeah. And also yeah. he's because he genuinely did it f for misguided patriotic reasons. So there was a bigger reason why he did it. So he got six months. And that... It's the key reason why the Mona Lisa is so famous. Wow. Because of the theft. Yeah. I mean, now it's so famous that the Mona Lisa, I mean, as we've talked about, it's gone on to inspire lots of other great artists to make works and security systems like it's like the cameras watching us all the time nowadays it's probably <laughs> a lot to do with the Mona Lisa's eyes isn't it oh yeah inspired <laughs> <laughs> except I don't feel a warm motherliness like I did in the council house in Basildon sure you know I didn't f don't feel the same when I'm spied on CCTV <laughs> so I've got three paintings here uh, which we will put links to on the site so people can see um, so the these are like uh, inspired by yeah. paintings and obviously a friend of well, a friend of the show he's not a friend of the show he's dead uh, but it's Marcel Duchamp and he took a cheap postcard as you realize uh, um you know as previously we've talked about the ready-made the idea that you know you just take something that's already made and call it art yeah. and he took an old postcard of the mona lisa he's uh given her a nice goatee beard and he's written the words in french l h o o q now when you say those words in french it sounds a bit like l ashore or coup, which basically means she is hot in the arse. All right, but with the tash, she looks like D'Artagnan or something. Yeah, I don't. F yeah, she doesn't look hot in that picture. Not with the. I mean, I'm not against bearded ladies. I'm all for bearded ladies. Women with beards, fine. Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but mm. she's not hot to me. She's not. But is the uh, do you uh, do you find the Mona Lisa quite a hot lady? Um, I find her more enigmatic. I think she's too unreal, but she she is beguiling. But I found her more motherly, as I said, rather than motherly. Yeah, absolutely. And um, right. And the next painting I've looked at, which is quite interesting, is uh, Jean Michel Basquiat, the American artist. He's from New York, and he uh, he died at the age of twenty seven. 
So Which this is this is going to be a bit more like modern art, this one. Yes, yes. And he died in the uh, 1980s. And uh, he was friends with Andy Warhol, so he's done a kind of a, a very primal, I think almost, uh, oil uh, on canvas of the Mona Lisa. And I think it's a reference to the Andy Warhol silk screens because he was friends with Andy Warhol. And now Andy Warhol did a lot of Mona Lisa silk screens. And I think it's kind of like his own kind of reply. All right, yeah, he's given her red hair. She's looking very... I don't think she beguiles me in the same way. She's quite a, quite a, an aggressive Mona Lisa, I think. Yeah, it's, it's still recognisable as the Mona Lisa, even though it looks so completely different, just because of the position of the model. Yeah. And the way her, the hands are like uh, yeah. on top of each other. It's funny, it's still definitely the Mona Lisa. You can't, can't get away from it. Yeah. I mean, I saw, I saw a really interesting one. It's funny how it's so much in our psyche. I've seen a, which I will put a link to on the site, uh, someone created the Mona Lisa out of coins. But it's not detailed how you think it was. It's actually like a kind of suggestion, almost like an impressionistic, and it really works. Wow. So I'll put a link on the site. And the final one is one of my actual favourite artists, anyway, is a, is a Colombian artist called Fernando Bottero. Now, Fernando Bottero uh, is quite famous for doing quite uh, inflated people. I don't know how to put them. They're, they're quite quite big, quite... Well, like they've had air pumped plump. into them. Yeah, they're quite plump. And he's done a really cool... Mona Lisa, it's called the Mona Lisa, and he painted it in 1977. And uh, he's he's captured that Mona Lisa quality, but she's a very almost like a very plump caricature. Yeah, yeah, and she's got good hair as well, I think. In this, so were, were all his paintings like that? Like, yes, they were all had the like the air pumped into. Yeah, they all look. They all look quite quite plump. Yeah, all, all his characters. It's almost like a cartoon, that painting. Yes, they're almost, they almost are caricatures, and all his works are like that. Mm. I've seen a big, and he did sculptures, and they're like big, there's a big inflated cat sculpture in a, a London hotel that I've seen, and it's, again, it it's, looks like it's been pumped full of air. Yeah, or like the cat's actually got in the larder. Yeah. And has just been eating yeah. I think for he's, days. I've, He's he, <laughs> Kenzie. <laughs> um, so I've learned a lot about the Mona Lisa. Yeah, I have as well. I, I don't. I'm Mona Lisa'd out. Oh, you Mona Lisa out? Well, well no, that's I could never be Mona Lisa out. I never could get bored of the Mona Lisa. Oh, really? Yeah. So, have you got any thoughts before the, uh, you know to, to to wrap up the show, Tom? Oh, just wondering: is there any presence of the Mona Lisa in uh, the place where Lisa is from? Is there any any monument to her existence as a real person? I think there's probably a blue plaque or the equivalent of a blue plaque somewhere. Italian equivalent. I, I mean, uh, where she actually lived, it was quite a, it's quite a humble street. It's just like, it looks like a, just a normal back street. It's not, it's nothing, nothing to suggest that she would suddenly be painted by, you know, arguably one of the greatest painters in the of all time. Absolutely. Uh, oh, yeah, well, thank you for uh, telling me about all that, Marcus. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. So... Um, just to say thanks for listening and if you can uh, go on to iTunes and give us a five star review that would be fantastic please subscribe we're doing quite well on Spotify now as well aren't we so you can uh, find our podcast there as well um, we will be putting li full links up to all the pictures on the website and also uh, Facebook. So uh, you can find us on Facebook as well. And the website address is modernartisrubbish.com. Oh, yeah. And if you want to email us, it's info at modernartisrubbish.com. And uh, we do have a Patreon page. So if you want to support the show, uh, it does cost us money. Uh, please head along to Patreon. And what's the address of that? Uh, Patreon.com forward slash modernartisrubbish. And uh, you can help us by donating to the show via the Patreon page. And uh, 
I think that's just it. I just think it's bye's now, isn't it? Yeah, bye bye. 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 Bye.